Hello everyone, Jekyll here, welcome to the next episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Engineering, the series in which I try to explain various engines in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! and hopefully help players with the deck building choices. With the Year of Fire firmly establishing itself both inside and outside the Yu-Gi-Oh! sphere, it's time to tackle the duo that is breaking the game's meta and player wallets. I hope you have some serious cash to burn, because it's time for the Snake Eyes and Deal Bell Star engines. Before we get to that though, remember to like, comment and subscribe if you find this kind of content interesting. I'm on a road to a thousand subs and every one of you counts. I seriously don't have enough backup emails. There is something planned for a thousand subs celebration and the faster we hit that goal, the sooner you get to know what it is. Now back to your irregularly scheduled programming. Snake Eyes as an archetype was introduced in Duelist Nexus, but it didn't become a thing until the next set, Age of Overlord, where direct support was introduced alongside with the Diablo Star engine. Additionally, unlike Diablo Star, Snake Eyes would have to wait until Phantom Nightmare and the release of Snake Eyes Poplar in order to start being featured at the top tables. Still, both engines are a dominant force in the current metagame, and I assume that, similarly to Kashtira, they aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Both the engines intermingle and are made out of many intrinsic parts, which is the reason today's episode is featuring them as a duo. I'll start introducing cards from the Diablo Star engine first, then proceeding to Snake Eyes. Therefore, let us start this section with the star of the show, the main character in the lore, and Yu-Gi-Oh's newest waifu. The above star the Black Witch is a level 7 dark spellcaster type monster that can inherently special summon herself from the hand by simply ditching a card either from the hand or the field. Not only that, but she can also set a simple spoil spell or trap card from the deck directly to the field if summoned, meaning that not only you can easily summon her, but also get a very strong card, all which while avoiding Ash Blossom. This must be some sort of witchcraft. This is not the card you will be setting with the Abel Star, since its effect does search the witch out, and you can special summon her using the condition on the card once per turn. It does have a provide some extra consistency due to its engrave effect. I have to say, this card is definitely something that every deck would have wanted. Unlike wanted, this card is one of those you would like to set on the field with the Abelstar's effect. It's very straightforward. Send one face of card to summon a level one fire monster from the deck. The sheer existence of it allowed the Diabolstar engine to gain so much traction. All of it boils down to summonable targets, which include, but are not limited to, Jet Synchron, most of the Snake Eyes, Rescue is Hydrant, and Legendary Fire King Ponyx. There are of course more, but these are the most impactful. At least for now. Not to mention that the engrave effect allows you to add monsters directly to the hand, and on top of the cards mentioned, you get another target in the Kurikara Div Incarnate. With all the cards in the Diablo Star engine introduced, it's time for the Snake Eyes, and we're opening this part with the main starter, one that on summon searches out a level 1 fire monster, and as mentioned previously, there are a lot of decent targets. Not only that, but you can also send it and another face of card on the field, and summon a snake eyes from the deck more, more hand. Poplar is the primary target for Ash to search out. That's due to the fact it can summon itself when added to the hand by any means. Not only that, but when summoned, it also searches for a Snake Eyes spell or trap card. Just looking at it, I can understand why it's so popular in the meta. Snake Eyes, just like most of modern archetypes, get their own field spell. This one is a bit different though, it places the Snake Eyes monster in the back row as a spell card. This effect can be useful when triggering Ash's on field effect. Additionally, it allows you to summon a monster that's treated as a continuous spell to your side of the field, which can provide additional materials and disruption depending on the monster summoned by this effect. This forest duo is mostly played as additional names, with Oak being an additional extender due to being able to fetch a monster from either Banishment or the Graveyard. Nothing much to say about Birch though. Either way, they make for a wood solid extension to the engine. Now time for the big boy himself, and it's a dragon, because of course it is. It can easily deal with an opponent's monster by placing it in the back row as a continuous spell. Not only that, but it can summon a monster from the back row during the opponent's turn. However, unlike the Divine Temple, it summoned it to the owner's side of the field. Most notably though, it will summon exactly two level 1 fire monsters from the graveyard when it's sent there from the field. It provides additional bodies on board, especially since it doesn't care 
how it's sent, only that it is. When it comes to build of the Diabolstar engine, it's extremely straightforward, as per usual. In most cases, it's made out of three copies of both Diabolstar and Wanted. Some people try different amounts, but most prevalent is everything in exactly three copies. The build of the Snake Eyes engine is very interesting. All that is due to its flexibility in design. Some people like to play more copies of Ashen Poplar, while others a bit less. I strongly suggest starting with the standard approach and adjusting the ratios if necessary. Like just mentioned, players tend to lean towards more Ash and Poplar, so the build of the engine looks as follows. 3 copies of Ash, at least 2 copies of Poplar, 1 or 2 copies of Oak, at most 1 copy of Birch, 2 copies of Flamberge, 2 or 3 copies of original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye, and finally 1 copy of the Divine Temple. When it comes to strong points of both engines, I would say they play a very similar role, which is providing monsters to the field. That's especially powerful since Link monsters exist. Additionally, the Abelstar being a level 7, is important for various Synchro or Xyz plays. Please remember, Kashtira is still a thing. Unfortunately, the engine, like all summoning focused engines, caps its power with the quality of monsters summonable. The better monsters, the higher the ceiling. Additionally, the Snake Eyes engine uses at least 13 cards in the main deck, with the Abel Star using additional 6. With that, we are looking at at least half of the deck dedicated to those two, leaving little to no room for other engines, hand traps, and non-engine power cards. Thanks to their flexibility, both engines can be played in basically anything. However, best decks to use those in are, unsurprisingly, Fire King, Rescue Ace, maybe Inferno, it's basically anything that plays level 1 fire monsters. Since both engines are meta-relevant, you have to be ready to burn a lot of money on those fire pyro monsters. I guess you have to use Mum's credit card since... That's one of the most powerful cards in all of Duel Monsters! And that will be it for this fiery episode. Big thanks to Christian for editing this one for me. I have been feeling a bit burned out, so getting some help was really refreshing. Anyway, I have have a question. What other card engines should I cover in the future? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, this has been Jacolo, and I'm signing out. Peace! <laughs>